This episode of Real Engineering is brought to you by Brilliant, a problem-solving website that teaches you to think like an engineer. Last month, Tesla held an event for their investors, revealing the advances they had made in their autonomous driving capabilities. Currently, most Tesla vehicles are capable of enhancing the driver's abilities. It can take over the tedious task of maintaining lanes on highways, monitor and match the speeds of surrounding vehicles, and can even be summoned to you while you aren't in the vehicle. Those capabilities are impressive and in some cases even life-saving, but it is still a far reach from a full self-driving vehicle, requiring regular input from the driver to ensure they are paying attention and capable of taking over when needed. There are three primary challenges automakers like Tesla need to overcome in order to succeed in replacing the human driver. The first of those is building a safe system. In order to replace human drivers, the self-driving car needs to be safer than the human driver. So how do we quantify that? We can't guarantee accidents won't occur. Old Murphy's Law is always in play. We can start by quantifying how safe human drivers are. In the US, the current fatality rate is about one death per one million hours of driving. That includes humans being stupid and crashing while drunk or looking at their phone, so we can probably hold our vehicles to a higher standard. But that can be our benchmark for now. Our self-driving vehicle needs to fail less than once every one million hours, and currently that is not the case. We do not have enough data to calculate an accurate statistic here, but we do know that Uber's self-driving vehicle needed a human to intervene around every 19 kilometers, meaning it failed every 19 kilometers, which makes Uber's collision with a pedestrian who unfortunately passed away even more shocking. Supporters of self-driving vehicles were quick to blame the pedestrian for stepping in front of the vehicle in low light conditions, but we cannot let our desire to advance the technology to make excuses for it. The vehicle was using LiDAR sensors, which do not need light to see, yet it made no attempt to slow down even after the human occupant, who was not paying attention, had noticed the imminent crash. According to data obtained from Uber, the vehicle first observed the pedestrian six seconds before impact with its radar and LiDAR sensors. At this point, it was traveling at 70 kilometers per hour. It continued at this speed. As the pedestrian and vehicle's paths converged, the computer's classifying system is seen struggling to identify what the object in its view is, jumping from unidentified object to car to cyclist, with no certainty in the trajectory path of the object. 1.3 seconds before the crash, the vehicle recognized it needed to perform an emergency brake, but didn't as it was programmed not to brake if it would result in a deceleration over 6.5 meters per second squared. Instead, the human operator is expected to intervene, but the vehicle was not designed to alert the driver, a shocking design considering our earlier statistic. The driver did intervene a second before impact by engaging the steering wheel and braking, bringing the vehicle speed to 62 km per hour, too little and too late to save this person. Nothing on the vehicle malfunctioned. Everything worked as programmed. It was simply poor programming. Here, the internal computer was clearly not programmed to deal with uncertainty. Where a human would likely slow down when confronted with something on the road that it could not clearly identify, this program simply continued on until it could identify the threat, at which point it was too late. It struggled to identify the object and predict its path, even with high resolution LiDAR. So how can we improve safety? A large part of that lies in the hardware itself and the programming that goes into it. Tesla unveiled its new purpose-built computer, a chip specifically optimized for running a neural network, which Elon stated was the first of its kind. It has been designed to be retrofitted into existing vehicles when customers purchase the full self-driving upgrade, so is a similar size and draws the same power as the existing self-driving computers at 100 watts. This has increased Tesla's self-driving computer's capabilities by 2,100%, allowing it to process 2,300 frames per second, 2,190 frames more than their previous iteration. A massive performance jump and that processing power will be needed to analyze footage from the suite of sensors each Tesla has. On the right side of the board are all the connectors for the different sensors and cameras in the car. That currently consists of three forward-facing cameras, all mounted behind the windshield. 
One is a 120 degree wide angle fisheye lens, which gives situational awareness, capturing traffic lights and objects moving into the path of travel. The second camera is a narrow angle lens, which provides longer range information needed for high speed driving like on a motorway. The third is the main camera, which sits in the middle between these two applications. There are four additional cameras on the sides of the vehicle, which check for vehicles unexpectedly entering your lane and provide the information needed to safely enter intersections and change lane. The eighth and final camera is located to the rear, which doubles as a parking camera, but has also saved more than a few Teslas from being rear-ended. The vehicle does not completely rely on visual cameras. It also makes use of 12 ultrasonic sensors, which provide a 360 degree picture of the immediate area around the vehicle and one forward facing radar. Finding the correct sensor fusion has been a subject of debate among competing self-driving companies. Musk recently stated that anyone relying on LiDAR sensors, which work similarly to radar but utilize light instead of radio waves, is doomed and that it's a fool's errand. To see why he said this, let's plot the strengths of each sensor on a radar chart like this, where we rank each feature on a scale of 0 to 5, 5 being the best and 0 being non-existent. LiDAR would look something like this. It's got great resolution, meaning it provides high detail information on what it's detecting, works in low and highlight situations, is capable of measuring speed, has good range and works moderately well in poor weather conditions. Its biggest weakness, however, is why Musk slated it. The sensors are expensive and bulky. And this is where the second challenge of building a self-driving car comes into place. Building an affordable system that the average person will be willing to buy. LiDAR sensors are those big sensors you see on Waymo, Uber and most competing self-driving tech. Musk is more than aware of LiDAR's potential. After all, SpaceX utilizes it in their Dragon Eye navigation sensor. Its weaknesses are simply too much of a sticking point for Tesla for now, who are focused on building not just a cost effective vehicle, but a good looking vehicle. LiDAR technology is gradually becoming smaller and cheaper, making the technology more accessible but far from cheap. Waymo, a subsidiary of Google's parent company Alphabet, sells its LiDAR sensors to any company that does not compete with its plans for a self-driving taxi service. When they started in 2009, the per unit cost of a LiDAR sensor was around $75,000, but they have managed to reduce that cost to $7,500 in the past 10 years by manufacturing the units themselves. From what I can tell, Waymo vehicles use four LiDAR sensors on each side of the vehicle, placing the cost for just these sensors for a third party at $30,000, not far off the total cost of a base model Model 3. This sort of pricing clearly doesn't line up with Tesla's mission, to accelerate the world's transition to sustainable transport. This issue has pushed Tesla towards a cheaper sensor fusion setup. Let's look at the strengths and weaknesses of the three other sensor types to see how Tesla is making do without LiDAR. First, let's look at radar. Radar works wonderfully in all conditions. The sensors are small and cheap capable of detecting speed, and its range is good for both short and long distance detection. Where they fall is the low resolution data they provide, but this weakness can easily be augmented by combining it with cameras. Regular video cameras look like this on our radar chart, having excellent range and resolution, provide color and contrast information for reading street signs, and are extremely small and cheap. Combining radar and cameras allows each to cover the weaknesses of the other, we are still a little weak in proximity detection, but using two cameras in stereo can allow the cameras to work like our eyes to estimate distance. When fine-tuned distant measurement is needed, we can use our ultrasonic sensors, which are these little circular sensors dotted around the car. This gives us solid performance all around without relying on large, expensive sensors, but Tesla is suffering from a bit of a redundancy problem with only one forward-facing radar. If that fails, there isn't a second radar sensor to rely upon. This is a cost-effective solution, and according to Tesla, their hardware is already capable of allowing their vehicle to self-drive. Now they just need to continue improving on the software, and Tesla is in a fantastic position to make it work. When training a neural network, data is key. Waymo has millions of kilometers driven to gain data, but Tesla has over a billion. 
And this data also extends past just while autopilot is engaged. It also receives data in areas where autopilot is not available, like city streets. Accounting for all the unpredictability of driving requires an immense amount of training for a machine learning algorithm, and this is where Tesla's data gives them an advantage. I won't go through the intricacies of training a neural network again, as I've covered it in the past in my machine learning versus cancer video, but the key takeaway you need is that the more data you have to train the neural network, the better it's going to be. Tesla's machine vision does a decent job of it, but there are plenty of gaps in their abilities. A channel here on YouTube by the name of Green The Only has managed to hack into his Tesla's vision to show us what the software actually sees. Here we can see the software places bounding boxes around objects it detects, while categorizing them as cars, trucks, bicycles and pedestrians. It labels each with a relative velocity to the vehicle and what lane it occupies. It highlights drivable areas, marks the lane dividers and sets a projected path between them. For now, this data allows Autopilot to operate on highways, but it frequently struggles with more complicated scenes. Here, a pedestrian is not detected. Here, it struggles to tell if a roller skater is a bike or a pedestrian, and here, it drives onto the wrong side of the road when there is a gap in lane dividers. Tesla, of course, is more than aware of these problems and is gradually improving on its software through firmware updates, adding functionality like stop line recognition. And this latest self-driving computer is going to radically increase the computer's processing power, which will allow Tesla to continue adding functionality without jeopardizing refresh rates of information. But even if they manage to develop the perfect computer vision, programming the vehicle on how to handle every scenario is another hurdle. This is a vital part of building not only a safe vehicle, but a practical self-driving vehicle, which is our third challenge. Programming for safety and practicality often conflict with each other. Take the AI program Dr. Tom Murphy developed to do something relatively simple, to play Tetris. This program worked brilliantly, but Tetris always wins. The game is unbeatable and you will eventually lose. When confronted with this option, the program did something to ensure it wouldn't lose. It paused the game. If we program a vehicle purely for safety, its safest option is not to drive. Driving is an inherently dangerous operation and programming for the multitude of scenarios that can arise while driving is an insanely difficult task. It's easy to say follow the rules of the road and you will do fine, but the problem is humans don't follow the rules of the road perfectly. Take a simple four-way stop as an example. The rules of the road make this seem like an easy task. The first person to arrive at the intersection has the right of way and in the case that two vehicles arrive at the same time, the vehicle to the right has the right of way. The problem is, no humans follow these rules. When Google began testing their driverless cars in 2009, this was just one of the issues they ran into. When it arrived at one of these four-way junctions, humans kept nudging forward, trying to make their way onto the junction before their turn. The Google car was programmed to follow the letter of the law, and just like our Tetris program for earlier, the self-driving vehicle was put in a no-win scenario and stuck on pause. Scenarios like this pop up everywhere and requires programmers to break the letter of the law and be a little aggressive. Sometimes the computer will need to make difficult decisions and may, at times, need to make a decision that endangers the life of its occupants or people outside of the vehicle. That is just a natural byproduct of an inherently dangerous task, but if we continue improving on the technology, we could start to see road debts plummet. While making taxi services drastically cheaper and freeing many people from the financial burden of purchasing a vehicle, Tesla is in a fantastic position to gradually update their software as they master each scenario. They don't need to create the perfect self-driving car out of the gate, and with this latest computer, they're going to be able to continue improving their technology. This is the fantastic thing about software. It is easily updatable, and Brilliant have improved their software by allowing courses to be downloaded for offline use on iOS, so you can work on learning new things even on an underground train or a plane. Brilliant also recently released their fantastic course on Python coding called Programming with Python. Python is one of the most widely used programming languages and it is an excellent first language for new programmers. It can be used for everything from video games to data visualization to machine learning for self-driving vehicles. 
This course will show you how to use Python to create intricate drawings, coded messages, and beautiful data plots, while teaching you some essential core programming concepts. This is just one of many courses on Brilliant. They also just released a Computer Science Essentials course and have many more due to be released soon on things like electricity and magnetism. If I've inspired you and you want to educate yourself, then go to brilliant.org forward slash real engineering and sign up for free. And the first 500 people to go to that link will get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So you can get full access to all their courses as well as the entire daily challenges archive. As always, thanks for watching and thank you to all my Patreon supporters. If you'd like to see more from me, the links to my Instagram, Twitter, subreddit and Discord server are below.